y'all. I am back on my bullshit. So we had last gone over how Alexi Treviso's attorney had filed a motion asking to um, allow her to go live on the dorms when she goes to college this fall and be allowed to interact with her boyfriend, Devin Fierro, because he's going to be going to the University of New Mexico too. And, um, you know, I let you guys know down the rabbit hole is where I got that information. If you're not following her, you definitely need to be. And also I got this information today from girl Friday and, um, you should go follow her too. She is a paralegal in New Mexico who is covering this case. And she has released the response from the state in regards to Alexi's motion to let her go to college. And we are going to read it. It's not super clear. Um, so I'm sorry that it's a little blurry, but this is all I got. I, I don't know how to get like a clear copy so anyway, here we go. Okay, so this was filed in the 5th Judicial District Court in Eddy County on August 7th, so four days ago at 3.15 p.m. And it says, State of New Mexico, which is the plaintiff, case number, and then there's the case number, um, honorary Jane Schuler Gray, Alexi Treviso, defendant, state of New Mexico's response to defendant's motion to reconsider conditions of release. Comes now the state of New Mexico by and through district attorney Diana Lucy and hereby requests this court deny defendants above titled motions. In support of its request, the state submits the following facts. The state incorporates by reference the arguments, facts, and findings of both the pretrial detention hearing and preliminary hearing held in this matter. As the court is aware, the defendant is charged with first degree unaliving and tampering with evidence for disposing of her newborn baby boy in the trash can in a restroom of Artesia General Hospital after she concealed the newborn in a trash can lining. Legal argument under Rule 5401C NMRA. The court should consider the nature and circumstances of the charged offense, including whether the offense is a crime of violence, the weight of the evidence against the defendant, the history and characteristics of the defendant, the seriousness of the danger to any person or the community that would be posed by the defendant, in the absence of conditions of release designed to prevent such harm. The defendant's motion to reconsider her conditions of release focuses entirely on her desire to continue a personal relationship with her boyfriend, whom she is currently forbidden from having a dating or intimate relationship with forbidden y'all like das ist verboten that's not good that's some very strong wording following the pretrial detention hearing the honorable judge david e finger wisely ordered that the defendants not have any personal contact with any person who is or could be defined as a continued personal relationship under 30-3-11b. Exhibit A. This prohibition restricts the defendants from having a dating or intimate relationship. The last time the defendant engaged in such a relationship, the result was her disposing of a newborn baby in a hospital trash can where the baby ultimately 
unalived. That shit's heavy right there. Okay, so they ain't holding nothing back. They are just going for the heart with this statement here. All right. This prohibition is designed specifically to mitigate the risk of the defendant reoffending in such an egregious fashion while she is pending trial for first degree and aliving. Despite the counseling the defendant claims to have engaged with, she nevertheless sees no harm in attending college with a man her counsel describes as her boyfriend. The fact that the defendant has a boyfriend at all is an apparent violation of her current condition of release. Y'all, they're saying Gary said she has a boyfriend. And so, like, maybe you should hold her in contempt, your honor. You know, maybe you should revoke her bail. The defendant seeks permission to continue this relationship with her boyfriend, attend the same college, spend time together in class and on campus, and commute in and from school. The defendant's apparent disregard for her current conditions of release, evidenced by her continuing a relationship with her boyfriend, illustrates why the condition of release prohibiting her from engaging in a dating or intimate relationship should remain in place. Defendant Defendant's motion should be denied and her apparent violation of her current conditions of release should be addressed at the hearing requested by her counsel. Oh, shit. So they're saying her attorney, Gary, wanted to have a hearing to show why she should be allowed to co- be allowed to go to college. And they're saying, you know what? Actually, at this hearing, we're going to tell you why you should revoke her bail and put her back in jail, your honor. The defendant's motion should be denied using the factors articulated in Rule 5401C and DNMRA. The defendant's admissions, video evidence, and fact witness testimony demonstrate that the defendant's conditions of release should not be modified to be less restrictive as there is strong evidence against her. The charges are extremely violent and serious and include the use of wanton violence against a helpless newborn baby and the calculated concealment of her unaliving of the newborn. Wherefore, the state respectfully requests this court deny the defendant's motion to reconsider conditions of release, maintain the current conditions of release, okay, and address the apparent violations of her current conditions of release. They are harping on that. And then they dated it wrong. Or I guess that is a three, not a one. It looks like 2021, but you know, (laughs) it's blurry. So it's hard to tell. It really is. And then there's the certificate of service and it is signed by Diana Lucy, um, a district attorney. So here is her court docket. I pulled it up on the Eddy County court website. And so like, this is all the shit for her case. And as you can see right here on, um, the 22nd at 1 30 PM, she is going to be having a motion hearing with judge Shuler gray. And I just, I don't know. I decided to look her up. And so in case you're interesting, this is judge Shuler gray. Hi, Ms. Schuler. And so um, Judge Shuler Gray is a district court judge in the 5th Judicial District of New Mexico. Gray is the first woman to serve on this court. So that's cool, right? She was appointed in March 2006 and was elected in November 2006. She was retained in 2008 and 2014. 
2014 New Mexico judicial elections, Gray was retained to the 5th District Court with 79.8% of the vote on November 4th, 2014. So, like, everyone likes her. Um, so, yeah, we have a hearing on the 22nd. That will be interesting to see what happens. It looks like she might be going back to jail. For real, for real. And uh, I will let you guys know what happens as soon as I know anything. Please like, sub, and share if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.